Texas A&M University San Antonio expected to hold classes in person in the fall. More on that to come. The annual book festival is back. Find out later what makes this year's festival different from years past. And in sports, the university softball team played their first home game in school history. Find out how they did later on in the show. My name is Dee Garcia and welcome back to another episode of Enlace. We're here at the Welcome Center to bring you the latest news. Students at Texas A&M University San Antonio can expect to take face-to-face -face classes in the upcoming fall semester. There will still be online instruction with the exception of hybrid classes where some days will be in person. A class that would normally be a full 30 students will go down to 20 students, and students, faculty, and staff will still have to wear masks along with getting their temperature checked. Wristbands will still be required on campus from the COVID-19 check-in tables along with the reporting if you have COVID-19. Dr. O'Brien tells us what to expect during the fall 2021 semester. We're going to go back to roughly around 70% face-to-face. -face. Now, that doesn't mean just three days in a classroom. It might be hybrid where you come one day a week to, to the class and then spend two days on, on Zoom or whatever. The social distancing is gonna be relaxed a little bit because here's the thing, we're, we're four and a half months away from the first day of class. Things are looking really good. We're, we're optimistic, but we're always cautiously optimistic. Cleaning carts will be in each classroom that will allow for every student to be cleaned down in between the in-person instruction and COVID testing will also be available for students, faculty, and staff at the university. The Texas Intercollegiate Press Association announced the winners of the TIPA Awards for the 2020 year on March 26. Jaguar Student Media earned a total of 40 awards across all of its platforms, which include Enlace, The Mesquite, and El Espejo Magazine. Enlace won 10 awards that included second place for the television program and a combination of first and second places in the following categories. In-depth reporting, Spanish multimedia, feature reporting, general news video, and sportscast. The Texas Intercollegiate Press Association holds a yearly convention and contest to recognize student media across the state. Congratulations to all the winners from Jaguar Student Media. A new reflective wall art installation is set to appear in the new classroom hall building to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the passing of the 19th Amendment. In honor of the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote, the school has chosen to create a reflection wall in the classroom hall building to commemorate the women who have fought for equal rights. Women at Work held a virtual conversation open to the campus to discuss which women would be chosen to appear on this installation. Dr. Phyllis Barragan facilitated this conversation and spoke on the importance of the reflection wall. We want to have the reflection wall not only commemorate the 19th Amendment, but also, um, you know, reflect the experiences of the campus community. Some of the most well-known women from the suffrage movement include Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, but they were not the only ones who helped make a difference. Women get the right to vote in 1920, so, but for so many communities cut across the lines of gender, race, class, um, especially like women of color, you know, the 19th Amendment doesn't really do very much to elevate their communities. There will be another virtual conversation soon hosted by Women at Work, which will further discuss the options for who will appear on the reflection wall. Please, everybody from the campus who's interested, like, come participate in this discussion, share your voices, like share your voice, share your thoughts with us. Let us know um, what you feel should be included. For Enlace, this is Nils Hernandez. With COVID-19 cases decreasing and vaccination increasing in the San Antonio area, A&M San Antonio continues to monitor positive cases that can impact the, the campus community. The weekly update of positive COVID-19 cases the school provides shows that for the week of March 21st to the 27th, there was one case of a student, which brings the total of the semester to 28. Also, as of March 31st, the students report there are no students in the isolation in Esperanza Hall. We'll bring you more updates in the following weeks. 
A&M San Antonio also hosted a major in-person event not only for students and their families, but for their beloved furry friends as well. On a sunny Saturday afternoon, family engagement and organization at A&M San Antonio hosted an event called Jaguar Puppy Pride Prance, which was not just for students, but for their families and dogs as well. Many activities were given to the family, such as a Miracle Mile, where owners could take their dogs on a walk or run, and a piñata smash, where kids were able to break a piñata on the floor for eggs that were placed in bags for safety reasons. Food trucks, an exotic animal petting zoo, a visit for Mickey and Minnie, raffles, and costume contests were also there for entertainment. One of the owners was excited to be there as she got to dress up her dog for the contest, which resulted in them being one of the winners. I have a lot of fun. I feel like what made it fun was um, having a contest for the dogs to bring them out and dress them up and uh, just like the food. So it was really, really fun. Over 40 dogs and 125 people with their families showed up, making this event one of the biggest events that the school has seen in a while since the coronavirus happened. Families who wanted to participate had to check in with a health review test and sign a waiver saying that they were going to keep their mask on. With the virus still around, some felt all right going out and being around people again for their own reasons. I'm not worried. I know the safeguards that Texas A&M has been um, continuously doing for the students, so they are following the guidelines, the CDC guidelines. And they're all following the safety rules as well. I see everyone wearing a mask, so safety was not an issue today for me. Many people enjoyed their day on campus with their families and their beloved pets. And if all goes well, we hope to see more events like this returning in the future. For Enlace, this was Dee Garcia. Coming up, Amanda brings us the latest in sports. Welcome back to Enlace. Due to the pandemic, the ninth annual San Antonio Book Festival will be virtual this year. See how the creators make it different from past events. Caitlin Silva brings us more. This year, the ninth annual San Antonio Book Festival will be virtual with nearly 200 authors, 100 sessions to join, and private chat rooms to interact virtually. This will be the festival's first year back after the cancellation of last year's event due to early stages of lockdown. It will also be the first time the book festival is entirely online and will include authors locally and nationally. The book festival is free with the exception of four sessions requiring a fee. You will see some ticketed sessions this year and that, you know, just reflects changes in the public in the publishing industry, too. You know, they've also taken a hit with COVID and uh, book sales are declining. In past years, the festival's official bookseller has always been Barnes & Noble. This year, it will be a locally owned bookshop located on Broadway. Elizabeth Jordan, Nowhere Bookshop's manager, says what the festival can do for the business. It does all sorts of things. I mean, it puts our, you know, store in front of the community in a, in a way that, you know, maybe people haven't heard about us. But it also shows that, like, we're a vital part of the literary community here in San Antonio. Renowned award-winning author Sandra Cisneros will participate in the event in a session mentioning four writers she believes are worth hearing about. Their work is heartbreaking and beautiful. And uh, I just am so astounded by the power of their words. But this is the writers I admire. They mm -hmm. honor their ancestors and tell the stories of the community. And they do it in a spirit of service. They're activists and they're remembering so that we don't forget this history. She says book festivals uplift people. So when we have the book fairs, it's important because, you know, the literacy and literature is a way of lifting people up and uplifting them. It's not entertainment. To me, it's medicine. Books are medicine, and you have to find the right prescription, the book that speaks to you. The virtual festival will take place April 9th through the 11th, and you can register prior to the event at sabookfestival.org. Books mentioned in the festival are available for purchase on NowhereBookshop.com and can be picked up curbside. Reporting for Enlace, Caitlin Silva. Hey Jaguar Nation, I'm your host Amanda Barilla and I'll be bringing you the latest in Jaguar sports. Let's slide on over to softball where it was a historic day in Jaguar athletics. This past Monday, the Jaguar softball team hosted their very first softball game, where our reporter Xander Chavarria was there to bring us more. 
I'm here at the Tejeda Sports Complex where the Lady Jaguars take on the Southwestern University Mustangs here at their first ever home game. The Jaguars opened up the game with a rocky start, giving up a 2-0 lead early. They eventually picked up the pace on defense and were able to tie the game as sophomore Katie Rangel sparked on momentum with hitting a triple at the bottom of the third inning. The game remained tied at the top of the sixth as the Mustangs found themselves having bases loaded with no outs. Sophomore pitcher Ebby Rodriguez weathered the storm when she threw her fourth strikeout of the game, keeping the score 2-2. Two two. The story of the game, however, was the amazing five-run comeback during the bottom of the sixth when five Jaguars made it across the plate, giving the Jaguars their first home win of 7-2. After the game, Coach Dufour reflected on the victory. A little bit of nerves got to us right at the at the beginning of the game. Um, USW, you know, like I said, they're they're coming out, they're trying to get their first conference win, and they're you know pushing hard, and it got to us just a little bit. Um, but like I said, we were able to settle down, stay composed, and and able to come back and and do what we needed to do at the plate. Jaguar pitcher Ebby Rodriguez shares with us how she stayed in the zone throughout the game after a commanding five strikeout performance at the pitcher's plate. I mean, you just got to stick to the mechanics. And then again, I knew my defense had my back and everyone was positioned right. And just I got to just trust in my spin and trust in myself. I, I worked hard. So, I mean, I knew I got it. The Jaguars look to take on the UIW Cardinals next Wednesday, April 7th at the Cardinals field. And continuing with softball, the Jaguars came back to the field for Game 3 against the Mustangs of Southwest University after splitting the first two games of the series. And well, what a game it was. The Jaguars were down 8-1 to one in the fourth inning when they started a furious comeback that saw them score six runs in the bottom of the fourth to bring them within striking distance. Fast forward to the bottom of the last inning with the score tied at 8 now. And that's when Cameron Cáceres got a walk-off hit and Kathy Rangel scored the winning run for the Jaguars, who erased a seven-run deficit. Uh, one of our biggest things was we, we knew that we had to just chip away piece by piece. We weren't going to do it in all in one inning. And we still had a lot of softball left to play, so we just kind of wanted to capitalize on every opportunity that we were given and just kind of stay focused. Pitcher Jacqueline Lizama went into the game when the Mustangs were leading 8-1 to one, and was one of the biggest reasons the Jaguars were able to pull off the comeback. We asked her how she stayed composed. My mindset really was to just do my job. There was a lot of pressure put on me, but I knew that as long as I did my job, my defense would work for me. And that took a lot of stress off, and they did, and we came back. And I'm so grateful for that. Great home debut for the Jaguars, earning their first ever home victory and also first series wins for the conference. We would just like to give a congratulations to the softball team for their great win. And in March Madness Basketball, the 2021 Men's Final Four matchups are set. 1950 was the last time Baylor fans have seen the Bears in the Final Four until Monday's win against Arkansas. We'll see number one seed Baylor versus number two seed Houston in the matchup, as well as number one seed Gonzaga versus surprisingly number 11 seed UCLA. UCLA advanced with two major upset wins over Alabama and Michigan in back-to-back -back games. The Bruins had not made an appearance since 2008. The Final Four will be played in Indianapolis Saturday, April 3rd with limited in-person attendance. The champion will be crowned on Monday. The San Antonio Spurs bounced back from their loss on Monday with a 120-106 win over the Kings. The silver and black led throughout the game, and although the Kings came back hot in the third quarter, DeMar DeRozan was unstoppable and powered the Spurs' win with 26 points, 5 rebounds, and 7 assists. Seven Spurs players also contributed to the win, scoring in double figures. The Spurs are back at it on Thursday night versus the Atlanta Hawks. In action from Texas United Football Association, the Bear County Bombers took on the San Antonio Titans at Brooks Collegiate Academy. Early on in the game, the Titans would strike first as D'Angelo Allen took to the end zone 7-0. Right before the half, it would be Trayvon King with a run down the middle for the touchdown and the Titans continued to dominate. Titans would take the win 39-0. 
Texas United Football Association, or TUFA, has 23 teams and has been in operation since 2009. That's all for Jaguar Sports, and up next, see about San Antonio's newest rooftop bar. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. The Moon's Daughter Rooftop Bar at the Thompson Hotel in downtown San Antonio opened up Friday, March 26th to a great reception. This bar has beautiful views of San Antonio. It's got two different bars, two different seating areas, a club-like style atmosphere, and remember folks, if you're gonna get in, make sure you call ahead because it's a 20-story high bar and has reservations only. Before we leave, Santa Perez brings us a new episode of Have You Seen This Yet? Welcome back to Have You Seen This Yet? This week, I'll be giving an overview of the new Suicide Squad based on its trailer and its related previous work. As always, be prepared for spoilers. The official trailer for the Suicide Squad was released on March 26th, and just from looking at that alone, things look quite promising for this film and its possible feature. And after the successful release of Zack Snyder's Justice League, this appears to be a point of redemption for the DC Extended Universe, as it writes its past mistakes and plays to its strengths. Actress Margot Robbie will be reprising her iconic role as Harley Quinn, while other familiar faces, like Viola Davis, will be making returns as well. Along them will be new cast members such as Idris Elba, Pete Davidson, John Cena, and Sylvester Stallone. Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn will be joining too as director and writer, already showing off his work as the trailer gives a more whimsical tone that's akin to his previous films. One other big distinction will be the R rating for violence and language in lieu of the usual PG-13 rating. So the dark gritty elements DC is known for will still be in place, only with little to no restraints this time. So with first impressions being positive for the most part, as fans see the way the new additions mix well with what was good about the cinematic universe, can they also be prepared for a full revival of this once struggling franchise? Questions will just have to wait to be answered on August 6, 2021. This has been Santa Perez with Have You Seen This Yet? Well, that's it for this week's episode. We'll see you next time. Remember to stay safe and wear your mask.